Uh, hi, in this video, we are going to see some of the mules of interview question. To start with, the first question is, in scatter and gather, one route is taking 5 seconds and second route is taking 3 seconds to complete. How much time it will take to give the output? For example, you have two routes in your scatter gather. Scatter gather, normally it works in a parallel. The first one is taking 5 seconds and second one is taking 3 seconds. So overall, how, many, how, many, how much second it will take? Because you have uh, two things are running in parallel, so the maximum time it will take the particular route, right? So for example, the first route is taking 5 seconds, second is 3 seconds. So overall, how much it will take? It will take 5 seconds only because it runs in a parallel. I'll move on to the next question. How to validate if email is correct or not by which component? So for example, if you see this one, we can use validation module to validate the email. So in the mules of mule 4, you have a validation module in that you have many operation. For example, I wanted to validate e email is valid. For example, you might have received some email for the customer information. You wanted to validate if it is a valid email. Maybe somebody has information, uh, filled the information like ABCD, which you don't want to insert to your backend database because it's still, it's not a valid. So you wanted to validate it before processing that to your backend system. So how do you do it? So you can use is email, it will validate. For example, you are passing some email ID dynamically here and if it is uh, valid, then it will proceed further. If it's not valid, it will throw an error like not an valid email, which you can set in an error option. So it's not only for email, right? Similarly, is there any other error? For example, is there any other validation you wanted to do? For example, you wanted to validate, it's a is it a number? Then you can use is number. I'll move on to the next question. If database table does not have an auto increment primary key, how can you pick the newly inserted record always from mule API? So for example, in mule soft, we have something called automated watermarking because when you use on table row, there will be something called watermark column where you can specify some primary key so that whenever there is a record is picked and it will automatically store that value. And whenever there is an extra run, it will pick the data from the the latest uh, watermarked information. So from that point, it will take the remaining record. But there is no, no such thing in the particular table. How do we do it? Then what we need to do is, we need to take one field, for example, like uh, I have something called loss modified date timestamp or some other number. I wanted to manually watermark it. For example, I'm not using, uh, so for example, I'm not using on table row. So I'm using some other function. For example, I'm using a scheduler to pick up some record but still I wanted to watermark it. So how do we do it? So we have to do a manual watermarking with the help of object store because in the object store, we can store some value which we can refer it in later. For example, I whatever the record I have processed, the latest process record information, I can put it in an object store so that when the next run, the our application runs, then I can refer that what is the value stored in my cache or uh, object store. So from that point, I can take the remaining records for my processing. I'll move on to the next question. Define batch jobs in Mule ESB. So, so just a definition. Uh, so batch job is mainly for handling the large volume of record, right? So what is batch job? It's an element in Mule which splits large messages into record and processes asynchronously in a batch job. So for example, you have a 100K record and uh, if you go with for each, right? It will go one after another. It will go sequentially, but you wanted to process very quickly as per your recommend. So you wanted to split all the 100K messages into small chunk of messages and you wanted to process it in parallel. Then how do you do it? We will use a batch job. What is batch job? Batch job is an element in a mule which splits large messages into records and process asynchronously in a batch job. So main thing is it splits your message and it process asynchronously in parallel. I'll move on to the next question. What is ESB? So when we use mule soft, right? Uh, so mule is a ESB or so what is that ESB, right? So ESB is enterprise service bus that enables developer to quickly connect the application and exchange the data. So when we have mule soft or when we have any ESB, right? So what will happen? This particular product will have a capability to connect multiple application. 
So for example, this particular product knows how to connect to Oracle, how to connect to MySQL database, how to connect to Salesforce, how to connect to Siebel. So how to connect to success factor. So it will have a connectors to talk to different system or it will have a adapters to talk to different system. So why do we talk to different system? So we exchange the data. So this ESB, it enables the developer to quickly connect to different application and exchange the data. If you don't have ESB, what will happen? For example, I have a Java. I wanted to connect to Oracle. Then what I need to do? I need to write a code. I need to apply the jar. I need to take the connection parameter and I need to manage my threads and uh, everything, right? So, but uh, it will be time consuming. But if you have a ESB, it will have a connectors. You just simply configure. It will try to connect automatically. So we can do the development very easily, which will, because mainly the TSB functionality that enables developers to quickly connect the application and exchange the data. It integrates with the existing system irrespective of technology, which application use such as web services, HTTP, JDBC and JMS, etc. So these are the different ways of connecting it, right? So these are the different protocol or ways of connecting it. So we don't bother about which system it is using in the backend, right? Or which protocol it uses. So we, we have all these ways of connecting in any ESB tool and what are the available ESB apart from Mule? In the Mule software is one of the Mule ESB, right? And uh, similarly, uh, there are many other companies also having ESB like software AG, web method is a ESB tool. Tip Dell Boomi, we have a ESB and Tipco, we have a ESB. Like there are many tools, uh, be a web logic integrator and you have IIB and so many things are there. I'll move on to the next question. Explain the concept of auto delete feature in file connector. So for example, I have a file connector where I have used on new updated files. So whenever there is a changes or whenever I receive any file, this particular listener or message source, right? Or even source, it will pick up the data. And uh, what is this auto delete feature? If you see this post processing action, auto delete by default, it's set to false. For example, I have received a file and after that, Auto delete is false. If I set to auto delete to true, what will happen? Once my flow is complete, it will delete the file. So that whenever it next run, we will not have that file. So whenever next run, we can process the new files. So what is auto delete feature? If you set true, which means deletes a file automatically from the source directory. And if you don't want to auto delete it, right? For example, you want to archive it or you wanted to move it to some other location. Then you can set that auto delete to false and then you can specify uh, what is the directory you wanted to move it. By default, it will be false. But if you wanted to override that value where you wanted to auto delete it, because after I process, I, want, I don't want that file. So I wanted to delete it. Then you can set this auto, you can set this auto delete feature value to true. I'll move on to the next question. What is payload in MuleSoft? What is payload? Payload contains the content or body of the message. So it's nothing but, for example, right? It's a content of the file. If you have a CSV data, so then it's a command will limited data, right? So the entire content is a file or entire content is your payload. And it's, a, for example, you are retrieving some employee record from the database. For example, you have hundreds of record that is called payload. Similarly, you are calling a web service. Uh, it could be a SOAP or REST and it's giving some response. That is also payload. So anything content or body of your message, right? The actual message is called payload. So if you look at this sample uh, or the structure, right? Mule for event structure, you have under the message, you have payload and attributes. The payload, it comes under mule message. So what is payload? So payload is nothing but your actual message, which is your contains a content or body of the message. I'll move on to the next question. How can you raise error explicitly in mule flow or subflow? For example, you have a, you wanted to throw an error. So how do we do it in error handling? You have something called raise error using which you can explicitly raise an error. For example, I wanted to throw like, uh, uh, this email is not valid. I wanted to throw that error or you wanted to throw any kind of custom error. So then we can use this raise error functionality in order to throw an error. I'll move on to the next question where we use any point VPN. So in any point platform, right? Uh, so we can use any point VPN configuration. So this will help to connect your MuleSoft VPC. So, 
So mules of VPC is nothing but your virtual private cloud where your mule runtime will run in the cloud up. So for example, you have a cloud in your organization, you are deploying everything into cloud up. So then what you will do, you will have specific network segment where you will try to deploy all your mule runtime. So that is called mules of VPC. So it could be your shared VPC or it should be your private VPC as well. So if you have a VPC, for example, you have a private cloud uh, in a MuleSoft AnyPoint platform, which you wanted to connect to your on-premise network. Then what we use, we use AnyPoint VPN in order to establish the connectivity from your AnyPoint platform, Mule runtime to your on-premise network. For example, you have application, you have a Mule runtime and you have a Mule application, which wants to connect to your on-premise database. For example, you have some application running in your on-premise. For example, your SAP is running in on-premise. You wanted to pick some data or you wanted to send some data, which is uh, running in a Mule runtime in a cloud hub. So then how do we establish the connectivity? This AnyPoint VPN will help to establish the connectivity between your Mules of VPC where Mule runtime is running and also a on-premise network. So this is a AnyPoint VPN. So VPN is nothing but virtual private network. So this is just a configuration which normally we configure it in our AnyPoint platform. So there we will have something called AnyPoint VPN where we need to specify the details about uh, our on-premise environment. Then it will try to establish the connectivity between your AnyPoint platform and also your on-premise network. So whatever I am referring the AnyPoint platform, it's nothing but your Mule runtime, which is there in your MuleSoft VPC, virtual private cloud, and also the connectivity to your on-premise network. The last one, in which time zone MuleSoft scheduler runs? For example, you have on-premise environment. You are deploying all your application into Mule runtime, which is running in your on-premise data center. Then what will happen? Whenever you schedule something, for example, my on-premise instance running in Singapore time zone, okay? Then if I schedule 8 a.m. morning, my this particular Mule application should run. Then that 8 a.m. is nothing but 8 a.m. Singapore time. So on-premise environment, because I'm talking about on-premise, it uses the same time zone as the machine on the Mule runtime is running. For example, my MuleSoft Enterprise server, it's running in a Singapore time zone where uh, my machine is running. And uh, when my scheduler will run, in what time zone it will run? So it will use the same time zone of where my MuleSoft on-premise instance is running. So, however, if application is running in cloud up, for example, you have deployed some application into your cloud up, then what time zone it will run? Because when you deploy something into your cloud up worker, you will have some region. For example, you will deploy into US region or Singapore region or any other region, right? Europe region. So wherever you deployed it, right? It will not run to that particular specific time zone. It always uses the UTC time zone. So when it comes to cloud up deployment, the scheduler will run in a UTC time zone, regardless of geographic region in which application is running. Even it's running in a Europe region or a US region, the scheduler, it will run only in a UTC time zone. For example, if I scheduled something at a five o'clock, my scheduler time it should run, then it's 5 a.m. UTC time zone. Yeah, this is the last question. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you for watching this video so far. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and also subscribe to this Tech Lightning channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.